Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. Um, I'm going today. We're going to be doing something different. We're going to be working with environments. And as you can see at the right, I have a little, a little photo, a little picture there of a place that I really liked. Um, it's a, it's a, a photo I found on the internet in Scotland. And <clears throat> I'm going to be using that as reference, more like inspiration, because reference. I'm not doing exactly the same thing. I'm doing something completely new, for, uh, but using that photo as inspiration for it. So what we're going to be doing is trying to get the colors at least close as possible um, by just looking at the photo. And we're going to try to catch the same mood. Uh, obviously, um, I'm, not, I'm, not young, I'm, not, I'm not even going to take the colors with the color picker or anything. I'm just going to try to get close as possible uh, with the color picker of Photoshop. Uh, I'm not going to use the, um, how is that called? The eyedropper. I'm not going to be using the eyedropper. So <clears throat> right now what I'm doing is a sketch because every time you're going to do something, obviously you have to do a sketch. Uh, if, it's, if you're working only with colors, when you're doing the first strokes, you are probably sketching uh, what you're going to be doing, right? So right now what I'm doing is just trying to get the lines uh, right and trying to kind of do the same thing. I, we have like three, three trees uh, kind of like falling there coming from that wall, that uh, uh, wall of rock. I'm going to try to do the same. It's not going to be, to be exactly the same, but it's inspiration. Um, <clears throat> so right now I'm just working with lines and a little bit of silhouettes um, because at this stage, it really doesn't matter much what you do uh, in terms of how defined those lines are. You can just do whatever you want. And right now, I'm just I just made everything smaller. I tried to change the the the, the foreground completely. Like everything that I have uh, right in front of us, I changed it a little bit to make it a little bit more intimate, more close and make kind of like a dark contour around it. So <clears throat> now what, what, I, what we can do is start filling the colors. And for that, uh, we need a base color first. Uh, and for the base color, I'm just going to try um, maybe some green or something a little bit, uh, kind of like bluish green or something like that. <clears throat> I think that's the color that is most present in the whole um, photo, something like that. And that's what I'm going to use as reference. Also, we have to make sure that we're working. Um, I, I, when, I, when I do environments, I try to have the background of the Photoshop in black because a lot of times when I have the, the gray background, what happens is that it will change the color for me. It will change the color on my eyes of what I'm looking at. So right now, <clears throat> I'm trying to put a little bit more of blue because I'm noticing that in the photo there's a blue on the shadows. That's that's kind of like a, that could be a filter that a photo has, but it could also be the lighting. It could also be the place that this that this uh, photo was taken. There's a lot of uh, bounce bounce light and and the skylight, the light coming from the sky is kind of like a bluish. Um, it could probably be, I repeat, it could probably be kind of like a filter thing that it has that makes the shadow look blue. But we went, we're going to try cast that anyway. Okay, so try, if, if you're doing this same thing that I'm doing right now, uh, look, what I'm, what I'm doing with the, with the, uh, doing everything darker, I'm not using completely black. I never go completely down. On the black, I'm using always uh, kind of like a really, really dark blue, really, really dark green or something like that. I'm never using completely black, so that's very important that you that you do that. Right now, I'm trying to find where the where the biggest um, light is coming from, uh, the source light. And I'm, I'm going to try and make the same thing on the water, like if it's reflecting the water that is going to be there is reflecting that light coming from the top. <clears throat> also, I'm trying to put a little bit of green. Trying to get the green right uh, is, was one of the most difficult things to do. 
the thing is not everything is the same green and not everything is uh, always green for example you can see that the water has a little bit of brown which is weird but it happens it happens in, in this photo and we have to try to to differentiate what the information that we're looking at okay so try to see the color and what what the, what does this color have that makes it look this way like it has a little bit of, of more brown it has a little bit more um, blue or something like that <clears throat> here I'm trying to make everything darker <clears throat> and you can see overall my image looks really really uh, war uh, looks a lot more warmer than actually the photo is the photo is more um, bluer that could also be because I had my lights on when I was painting. I'm telling you, everything counts. Everything, everything that you that, that you're doing counts. The what screen you're using, the light on your room, um, the background of the painting uh, that you're working on, <clears throat> stuff like that. Okay, so right now uh, it's not important that you get into details, but you have to start developing your image. In terms of you you want to see progress you want to see that you are doing a progress on the painting so what you do is make your <clears throat> your brush a little smaller you can make your brush a little more smaller and try to do some details here and there but try not to spend too much time on details at this point because right now what you want to do is try to cover as much as possible in terms of the progress of the painting. When you reduce your your brush too tiny, what happens is that you're going to start feel like you're doing slowly, because the detail phase is one of the most long, boring, and you have to really put some time on it to make it um, to make it look right. But you cannot make the details right if you have if everything else is failing at that point. So right now I'm just trying to put some details on the parts that I think. The, uh, that are going to be really little, so it, there's really no way that I can that I can do those leaves and stuff like that with a big brush. I mean, it will have to look it will look completely different. And if I use a big brush at that point, what will happen is that I can hurt myself later because um, when I'm going to do the the details, I'm gonna have to be erasing those shapes so I can make the the details of that part. Okay, so right now I'm trying to make the image more interesting and I thought of, okay, this kind of, this look is starting to look a little bit spooky, a little bit scary, so I'm going to try to put a little bit more mood on it with some vines or stuff like that, like um, on the floor, maybe some tree branches, uh, stuff like that. <clears throat> also, I noticed that left part is way darker and I didn't have too much dark in there yet so I'm trying to interpret what I have there okay so now we have we are getting to what I call the first the first part on the detail process uh, depending on what painting I'm working on in this one because it's not something like for my work it's, it's more like a for fun I'm going to do just one phase uh, of this detailing process. So what I do is I divide the image in, in two parts and I, I put a timer. It could be any time that you want. For me, I will use maybe half hour or 20 minutes, depending. Then what I will do is like braid the same image in four parts and do the same process again in each part. So I will be working uh, right now I will be adding details to the painting uh, by 40 minutes and then I will be doing 80 minutes <clears throat> of the of detailing but again depending of what time do you use like for example I, the, I at the beginning why when I was starting like years ago to do detailed painting paintings I will use like 30 minutes per square and then I will change to really really tiny squares and I will do like five minutes each square or something like that and at the end what happens is that the image looks completely detailed but there is no room for like um, there's there's everything is unfocused there's nothing like like is 
out of focus or something like that so it looks kind of like it too crowded like there's too detail overall the the painting looks, doesn't look that good <clears throat> but anyway also depends on, on the on what you're working on and the client of course if you're doing it for something like if the client really wants something detailed because he wants it to be that way um, some some people will argue that you shouldn't do everything that your client <laughs> asks for but I will do I will be the opposite I will say that you should do whatever your client asks for because they are paying you um, to do that unless you can argue that you're doing this or that for some specific reason uh, like for example there are really good talks in uh, level up there's one with Shadi Safari and he says that if you if you you don't want to do something because of the storytelling or or this or that part of the painting you shouldn't do it because you are you are basically trying to make the image better by not putting a lot of stuff not a lot of detail and a lot of stuff okay anyway and changing the conversation too much okay so here uh, you can see that there are little um, um, really bright parts and that's basically dirt it looks like it was it's weird because it's bright um, it's kind of like white for some reason and bluish and people will say why is it that color well in the picture it looks that color I could say that that's the dirt being wet and reflecting the color of the sky so that's why it looks that way and most of the people will paint that uh, uh, from memory and they will do it uh, in brown because that's what makes sense right that the that the dirt is brown and people won't care that, that the sky is blues or there's a specular light uh, reflection and stuff like that so they will do the dirt brown and that's it well no uh, in this case that dirt is really dark is wet so it's reflective and because of that is reflecting the color of the sky and everything around it and if everything around it is uh, overall is blue the dirt looks, looks blue then so that's why it looks that color now I change it a lot I change it the the overall uh, temperature of the image by adjusting the levels a bit so now it's not dark it's not that bluish it's a little bit more warmer but I kind of like it so I left it that way okay so <clears throat> we start to get into the more detailed parts so now I divided the image in four what I'm going to do is using a timer you cannot see it right there but you'll see it if you get the to the <clears throat> full video on Gumroad, uh, it doesn't it doesn't have audio, but you can see the the full process of it, like from uh, beginning to end. Uh, and now, I, I what I can do is um, just stop in this part and just work all that um, all this space, uh, putting details and details and every detail that I want. Now. What I will do is put more detail when I what I want the people to look at or where I think there is a lot of detail to put on. Like this, this image is not working at all in this part or something like that. But this really doesn't. You can really understand anything of, of what's going on here. So I will do some details in there. Um, if there's some also if there's something that is too close there should be also there should be detail unless you want you want to make it look like it's um, out of focus because it's too close you could say that you will you will put uh, detail in there but if it's going to be something uh, completely unfocused and <clears throat> you want people to look at it there sh then there, there should be a lot of detail because that people will notice like if there's some more detail in some parts than other parts but it will make sense that if it's close to you it will have detail <clears throat> okay so also the the places you want people to look at should have detail also so I know that maybe most of the people is going to to see these uh, three branches going out of the rock so I will probably put more detail in there 
or maybe I can also attract people's um, view by using more detail in there because they the people will uh, interpret that. <laughs> I said I, I I feel weird saying people because I'm obviously talking about you guys. Anyway, okay. So now what I want you to understand. Uh, in this tutorial is also that I'm not using any special brushes. I'm just using uh, basically one brush, which is kind of like a, a square brush, which is not weird at all. And sometimes I even use it without opacity. So learning how to blend, I have a video on that on YouTube actually, but learning how to blend is not like you don't need a special brush to blend you just know how to you just have to find a way to do it if i will if i if i were to tell you how can you understand blending use a brush without opacity on the on the pression um, just change the opacity with the numbers change opacity with the numbers and try to blend color that way you will understand um, way better like a lot because you have to kind of force yourself to blend colors without the ability to blend by using the pressure of your pen you kind of have to do it um, like you have to do all the work for it the computer is not helping you at all so once you understand how to blend a color that way you can you can blend with any brush anytime that's kind of like the way I learned how to blend. Okay, so now I'm going to put 10 minutes of more work here. Uh, as you can see in there, in the in the little timer that I that I got, a lot of people ask me what timer is that. It's called cool. It's called cool timer. You can find it for free on the internet. Uh, sometimes they will ask uh, like a donation. You can do it or not. I I did like a lot of time ago. So. I probably will have to make a small donation to them again because I use it like all the time. Anyway, this is basically it uh, in this video. I really hope you like it. Please leave a comment, uh, maybe saying what could I draw next in terms of environments. What environment should I do next? Do I do a castle or do a spaceship or whatever you guys want. Um, and try to do something new. Uh, don't don't get stuck on doing the same thing that you see on the photo try to create try to look for influences and remember you can download the PSD at the right there is a button that say, says PSD in my Gumbra page and if you want to support this channel you can buy any of the tutorials in there so thank you very much and see you next time